Ukraine is ready for negotiations with Russia. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky said this in an interview with the US TV channel PBS NewsHour that he said that official Kyiv is really ready for negotiations with those who want peace, but Russia does not want peace. So we understand that Putin is not ready for any negotiations. He doesn't want. He's not interested. For him, this is not victory. He needs victory. And, for him, victory is to destroy Ukraine. Moscow does not intend to negotiate for the end of the war. According to Zelensky, the peace summit will be held in Switzerland in mid-June this year, a plan to end the war will be prepared. This summit will be held without Russia. Because Russia can hinder the plans. Zelensky also said that children in Ukraine understand everything, they, including my children, believe in victory more than some of our partners. Our children know the answers to all questions. They understand that the end of the war depends on some factors. But they are sure that we will win. Our children do not doubt it. The country's leader noted that his children are worried about his fate, I think they are afraid of whether I will survive the war. Zelensky said that Ukraine will not be able to win without the support of the United States, frankly, without the help of the Congress, we will not have a chance to win. This is very difficult for us. Because Russia is superior in terms of personnel and equipment. He also stressed that Russia is attacking the territory of Ukraine from the occupied Crimea. fifty missiles and drones with 60 tons of explosives into Israel, Iran revealed what weapons used. Iranian media reported what range of weapons were used in the attack on Israel. At the same time, the Iranian military did not disclose this data, but the country's government publications claim that they used drones, kamikaze, and several types of ballistic and cruise missiles. In particular, the Iranian army used several hundred Shahed 136 kamikaze drones capable of flying about 2,000 kilometers at a speed of 185 kilometers an hour and carrying a 50 kilogram warhead and IMAD ballistic missiles presented by Tehran in 2015, the range of which reaches 1,700 kilometers. These missiles are the largest Iranian missiles of their class. Also, according to the Iranian press, during the recent attack, more than 30 Pave cruise missiles presented in February 2023 with a range of about 1,650 kilometers and a number of other missiles, the type and specifics of which were not specified, were used. Moreover, the shortest route from Iran to Israel via Iraq, Syria and Jordan does not exceed 1,000 kilometers. Iran launched approximately 350 rockets and drones carrying 60 tons of explosives into Israel in a mass attack on April the 13th, Israeli Defense Forces representative Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari said. The attack could have caused enormous damage, he said. However, only a few Iranian missiles penetrated Israel's territory, causing minor damage to Israel's Nevatim Air Force Base. Israel managed to repel Iran's missile and drone attack only with the help of the United States and Tel Aviv's other Western and Arab partners. Some of the air targets were shot down outside Israel. American, British and Jordanian fighters played a key role in this aviation. Western media note that against the backdrop of the Iranian attack, doubts arise about the ability of Israel and its allies to repel the attack in conditions of total war. The Iranian attack on Israel is similar to those that Russia has repeatedly launched against Ukraine, the Institute for the Study of War said, noting that Iran was likely determining the best way to break through Western-style air and missile defenses. Putin fired commanders amid failure to recapture Kherson region. Two Russian commanders have been dismissed for failing to recapture southern parts of Ukraine that were lost during Kyiv's counter-offensive last summer, according to pro-Kremlin sources. According to Newsweek, the commander of Russia's 18th Combined Arms Army, which has been fighting near Krynki in the southern Kherson Oblast, was fired along with the commander of the 70th Motorized Rifle Regiment, which had been fighting near Robotyne in the Zaporizhia Oblast, according to Russian military bloggers. 
The firing of the generals by Russian President Vladimir Putin is not excluded. The former was Lieutenant General Arkady Mazoev, although the head of the latter unit was not named by the Telegram channel Pozivnoi in a post which was shared by other prominent mill bloggers over the weekend. Ukrainian partisans movement Atesh operating in the occupied south of the country has reported mass desertions by Russian forces there, with Moscow's troops refusing to carry out combat missions. Atesh wrote on its Telegram channel, Russian soldiers are disappearing en masse in the Kherson region. Our agents also note the arrival of a large number of personnel of the occupation army in Novoleksivka. Atesh wrote, this refers to a rural settlement in southern Kherson, close to the Isthmus or Perikop that separates the Crimean Peninsula from the mainland. The group added, these soldiers are located in vacant abandoned houses. Most of them have multiple tattoos on their body. The local population believes that these are people who were previously in prison. Neither Russian units regained all the territory that Ukrainian forces captured in Zaporizhia and Kherson oblasts during last summer's offensive. According to the head of the Joint Coordination Press Center of the Defense Forces of Southern Ukraine, Natalia Humenyuk, Russians repeatedly try to force Ukrainian troops out of their positions on the left bank of the Dnipro River in Kherson region, but suffer losses during the assaults. The enemy is having a groundhog day every day. They launch assaults, suffer losses, form new units, and then go round and round, she added.